Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a few days since we last went to go and have a look at the uh, Massey Ferguson 135 and today I've got the rollers just out of the uh, stack yard here. I pulled them out behind those bales and not that long ago we changed the tyres and we also re the ram and put that all back together. So, so that's all back on and good to go. I've, I've just plugged it in, hooked it all up and we'll go out and roll in the spring barley which has recently been planted and it's just come up. Um, I've just noticed I've got an oil leak there for some reason. I don't know why it seems to be leaking out the... Let's see what that's all about. Just put them in float. See what's going on with that hydraulic. Had a bit of pressure on there and it's somehow leaking out of there. I think we might have to replace the valve at some point with the uh, spool. It's probably leaking out of there. Yeah, you can see it's hissing out. A bit of a shame, really. Another job to do. So we're now in the field and I've got my little blue cord which I uh, had on these rollers for a while and I pulled the cord with a bit of rope. Oh, don't want that to fall out the window. And then if I put the shuttle in reverse, there we go. If I pull the hydraulic ram down a little bit, there we go. It's always a bit of a tense moment doing this. Get it in the right order. And out they fold my rollers. Six meters, 6.2. Not the biggest rollers in the world, but they do the job. Oh, bloody string's gone down there now. Bloody thing. <clears throat> Need that in the cab, really. Oh, there we go. That's a good idea, actually. Staying on the window there, that's what I do. Ideal. Right. What I normally do is just go around the headlands first and then go on the tram lines. So I get the headlands done, out of the way. On touch wood it seems to work. We've been doing it this way for well years, ever since we came to this farm. So you can just see there, we've got the pup touching the edge of the margins there, edge of the field. Just keep an eye on it in the mirror on that side. On the lower mirror normally works quite well. So we'll just do these headlands and then I'll see how I'm getting on with the rest of the field. I'm trying to get on the field whenever I'm around. I don't know if you can pick them up on camera but they are trying to eat the crop all the time. They're so annoying. So I've just come down to a lower part of the field and it's very cloddy around here, the crop hasn't really germinated very well, so I'm just trying to go a bit slower here, about 4k, to try and do a better job to break down these clods. It does seem to be working, but this is a heavier part of the field, and uh, it, it's um, got a lot more clay content in this soil here, and then as we move back into the field, it becomes lighter again, and that's where the crop's gotten, go gotten going again. So it's quite interesting looking at the different soil types, uh, and how it affects the germination of the barley. If anyone was wondering what this barley normally goes for, we normally uh, sell it as malting barley if it makes the grade, and last year we actually sold it to Diageo and it went for Guinness. I was going to have a, a celebratory Guinness, but I'm not really a Guinness drinker to be honest, so I had a lager instead. And uh, more recently, I've been getting into ales. I quite like pale, pale ales. You know, we sell it for beer, and generally, if it generally, and if it, we can't sell it for beer, we'll sell it for feed barley. And this year, we're hoping that the, the barley price will stay up. And because our cost of production is relatively low, because we use liquid nitrogen with Frontier, we try and do our work with the farmer next door and ourselves, and um, try and keep the cost down as much as we can. And it works out pretty well. And then we grow a cover crop of turnips afterwards which we put the sheep on. So um, if all goes well this year and I protect the crop and I keep the deer under control and the hares and the rabbits which are making a return, we, we should be able to make a good income, a good living from the spring barley um, despite the current challenges um, of farming at the moment because of the price of fertiliser and red diesel and things like that. So it's, um, it's looking up actually 
the spring barley crop this year. And I had a number of comments in the, the most recent video with the Massey Ferguson 135. It is taking a little bit of time, um, but it will be back very soon. The other tractor which I've got at the moment, the, the old Massey Ferguson 65, has got something wrong with it at the moment. I think the head gasket's blown on it because every time I go to it in the morning to start it up, I do the gallops normally every day or the arena every day with it. And uh, every, every morning there's just a puddle of oil underneath it now. And, I just keep topping up the engine oil, but it just the more I put in, the more it, which comes out the, the head gasket. So I'm either going to have to do the head gasket on it or send it away and have the engine rebuilt because I can see some more problems with that tractor down the late, later down the line. Um, that's the trouble with the older tractors. Unless they've been fully restored and they've been tidied up, they do have a few problems like that, generally head gaskets and like leaky problems with the lift pump and things like that. But um, for the most part, it is a really good tractor. It is the Mark 1. I. I was speaking to uh, Gavin about it the other day and uh, Terry over at Young's Agricultural there in Cambridge. And uh, it is a Mark 1 65. It's a good tractor, it's a four cylinder model. Um, so if it, if it keeps working and it, I can keep it going, that'll be fine. It, we've only had it for, a, a, you know, six months. Um, and, you know, it, it gets work. It gets, since using it every day, it probably has put a bit more strain on the tractor um, because it's an older model. Do we restore it? Let me know in the comments section down below if you'd like to see that tractor restored as the next project because it is a good tractor and it does sound really good actually when it's working and uh, it, it's very basic, more basic than the 135, that particular one and uh, it's just a really handy size at 65 horsepower. It's a little bit more powerful than the 135 and it's got plenty of character. So leave a comment if you'd like to see that tractor restored as the next one to do. Um, and then we've recently been looking at some second-hand John Deere mowers uh, and John Deere balers as well. So we're, we're having a keen eye on some uh, John Deere silage equipment to work with this tractor. Sorry, I just had a phone call there. That was Dad who's checking the sheet with the gator. We recently put a new, um, a new drive shaft on that, uh, or steering rack, sorry, on that gator. It's a pretty good little bit of kit, really, when it works. They're, they've got a few little niggly problems, gators, but, you know, we get Jack, the mechanic, to uh, work on the tractors and the gators. He's, he's always done a pretty good job. So uh, the gator's up and running again. And then uh, when I check the sheep, I normally use the Land Rover, and I bought a pair of binoculars the other day to um, check the sheep when they're far away and to check any for any sheep on their backs and things like that. So. Um, yeah, we'll just finish off doing this rolling, um, but it is a lovely day, beautiful weather, and although it's sunny, it is actually quite nippy outside. It's been fairly chilly, about five Celsius recently, um, so the barley has in places just started to get a blue tinge on the top of its leaves, um, which indicates it is very cold, but it is looking as though it will warm up, and we'll hopefully be able to get some cattle out soon, which will be really good news. Okay, well we've just finished this field now. We're just driving along the tram line in the headlands, just on the way to the gate. And then I just want to do another one and uh, another field just over on the other side of the farm. They've got the uh, potato companies planting some potatoes at the moment, green bales. So we'll, um, we might see them. We'll just make a start on the next field, and then I've just got to go and have a look at the tractor and uh, see if we can get that fixed. The, the old 65. So this one's called Letterbox. It's a little bit sandier than the other fields and it's also the field which has got the gallops, the horse gallops going around this field. So I'm pretty used to this one because I normally drive around it with the roller um, most days and uh, it is quite light. That's why it's quite dusty behind. So uh, and, and this year we've got a bird cover mix over there, we've got spring barley and then just over there in the middle we've got some fodder beet which I'll show you guys either today or tomorrow and uh, that's going to be the next next year's food for the uh, well hopefully this year's food for when the cattle come in later on in the year. So as I said earlier this is the um, this is the field we've been working near today where the potatoes are going in this year and there's two different varieties one for uh, mashed potatoes for the co-op and one for um, I believe roasting uh, main crops so uh, this is what the land's looking like they've just been ridging up today and de they're de-stoning and then planting some potatoes so um, yeah it's all it seems to all be going well and then just back in the shed this evening the uh, the head gasket's blown as you can see um, it seems to just be leaking worse and worse every day so it'll probably be a job to take that rocker off take the head off and uh, put a new gasket on and then hopefully this tractor will be good to do some more work with I mean 
it could be another project tractor, another restoration job. Leave a comment in the comment section down below what you think of it and whether you should restore this one or maybe swap it for something else or um, have a look at like a 35X or something like that. So yeah, thanks very much for watching today's video. There's lots more videos coming up over the next few weeks, uh, including we'll be visiting Class UK. Keep an eye out for that. Give this video a thumbs up uh, and do go and follow the Ollie's Farm Instagram page to find out what I'm up to day to day on the farm. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.